uh, applying to grad school. Uh, so you might have heard or already met with me with regards to um, discussing your personal statement, resume, um, schools that you're applying to for grad school. Um, and I wanted to just take you know, 10 minutes sometime to formally go through uh, some of those parts, um, some questions that I've seen uh, pop up in each of those uh, you know, sections, um, and then just provide some general resources on uh, how to get started or how to continue working on those things. Um, so as you all know, most deadlines are uh, November, December. So uh, I would doubt if you have not started or have not reached out to me or met me yet, uh, I would highly recommend doing that. But yeah, let's first uh, give a brief overview on some of the major things when applying to grad school. So go on to the next slide, Razan. So structuring the statement of purpose. Um, so you all have probably heard that, you know, the statement of purpose is generally is the main uh, essay. It's probably around two pages of you describing your past research experience. Um, so this is a little different than a resume. A resume kind of just lists, you know, your main contributions towards each of your research, each of your experiences, whether work or, or research. Um, the statement of purpose basically is conveying your motivation for a lot of those research projects. So I'm going to provide a brief overview of how you can structure it. I will give a disclaimer though, that this is one way to do it. And we've given it, we'll be giving you some example statements of how others have done it. Um, but you know, just a disclaimer, this is one way. All right. So the first thing is in your statement of purpose, I've seen that uh, you know, uh, a lot of times people don't delve into the very basic of who, what, and why you want to do a PhD. And what I mean by that is. Uh, if a faculty is going to be looking at your application, in the first or second paragraph, they want to know if you're a good fit for their lab. Um, and so in that first paragraph, you want to list, who are you? Like, you know, what, you know, where are you studying right now? What do you want to study? I want to do a PhD in uh, uh, NLP, specifically focusing on low resource languages or something, and why you want to do grad school. So why you want to study those topics? What's your motivation? Um, just very clearly so that they know that they should be read, keep reading. Um, you can start off with a story that kind of motivates your research, but I would keep that very short and just very quickly motivate who you are. Um, the next part would be three to four research experiences. So these do, don't necessarily have to be just research. They can also be internships, um, but just, you know, each experience would have its own section or paragraph from your undergraduate studies to now, so they would be in chronological order, uh, that have been pivotal to your research direction. Um, and for each of those experiences, again, you want to very strongly motivate. And those motivations are not in your resume, which is why you want them to be in your statement of purpose. Motivating why you chose to embark on your internship experience, what you did uh, uh, at that experience, research or internship. So generally, you know, what is the domain specific knowledge that I need to know in order to understand your experience? Maybe you worked on um, uh, so, you know, climate change research and you have to give a brief description of, of that. Um, and then the technical details of that experience, your accomplishments. So whether that resulted in a presentation, publication, if it's an internship, the number of people who are using that service, whether it was deployed at the company, some you know general takeaway uh, uh, for that for the research experience, and then your own takeaway and learning. So what does that mean? Um, what did that research experience teach you about research, about that field, about oh, about challenges in that field? They basic you know faculty basically want to see, are you a critical thinker? Um, so you basically want uh, your experience to show that in some way. Um, and then after, you know, you describe, you describe the experience, you want to discuss what made you switch to the next experience. So as I mentioned, general reflections, uh, this, you know, experience showed me that, uh, uh, you know, distribution shift is a huge problem in this space. And I, you know, this is not a very good example, but something around those lines that, you know, you realize that, um, this is a challenge that you've seen in industry that you maybe want to tackle in your next experience or in, 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 in the, in future work, um, the next slide. So after you've described your work, a lot of people choose to also have a paragraph describing open-ended problems they want to explore in a little more technical depth. Um, so you can have this after each experience. You can also have this at the very end being like, you know, uh, doing work in uh, self-driving cars and uh, RL showed me that 
here are the open-ended problems I want to work on and why. And that really connects to the next paragraph, which would be the professors at that institution you want to work with and why. So noting their name and then the research that they do, um, maybe even you know, very briefly, I think you should keep one sentence per professor if you can. Um, a lot of people have done it in different ways, but that's that's what I've seen. Uh, noting their name, what they work on, and why you want to work with them. Um, so that that you can mesh those two paragraphs together. You can keep them separate, depending on how long your personal statement is already. And then the last one is you want to conclude. You want to remind them, what are you doing that your PhD in? Why you want to do grad school? And what kind of impact you hope to have in, have in your field? Um, so either you want to become a professor. You want, you can maybe... You know, note some mentorship stuff you've done. Uh, sometimes there's different props for that. Um, and then just, you know, how you hope to make strides in solving X problem in that research community. Um, so that's a general structure that I've seen uh, in personal statements. And you, you know, I think different people have also done this very differently, but the elements of describing your research experiences in depth, noting professors and the research problems you want to work on, I think is consistent throughout. Uh, next slide. General notes on the SFP from things that I've seen uh, from fellows here and elsewhere. Be clear on what your contribution is in your research project. So what do I mean by this? You don't want to be using we, like we did this, we did that. Uh, you can very clearly in the beginning of your research experience know that you were working with a collaborator from X place, but you want to use I statements, right? Because you're applying to grad school. You want to show them that you are a capable researcher. So you know, I did this, I contributed that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would, uh, I don't think, I think I've seen more people be more humble than not. So if you're confused on what that balance is, ask me. Um, but I think, you know, being very clear with what you did is very important. Don't be afraid to go into technical details because CS faculty will be reading the SOP. So you can see some personal uh, statements on, on Slack um, and, and see how people have done that and that balance. Um, I mentioned this before, you wanna demonstrate that you're a strong researcher by describing the experience in your work, not telling them that you are one. Um, cite your work if needed. You don't need a, pub and this is where I will emphasize, you do not need a publication to apply. You know it's intimidating that sometimes people, like you feel like people have a PhD in order to apply to one, um, but the whole point of Fatima Fellowship is to make sure that you are a good researcher and that you have shown that you can be one. Um, and so even if you don't have a publication, having, a, you know, maybe the work that you did with Fatima Fellowship, you can put it on archive, you can say I'm submitting it to this workshop, I'm submitting it to this conference, uh, maybe don't list the exact conference because you want to be, you know, anonymous, just be like I'm, you know, forthcoming machine learning conferences, some vague notion of, you know, that not, not being very uh, explicit, uh, just showing them that look, this is the research I've done, and I can do good research. Um, Another point, stay focused on the research. Uh, do not provide any personal history. Um, I've seen sometimes, I think it's, you know, we feel that we need to give, you know, uh, sadly, like, you know, there might be circumstances that happen in undergrad or right now that are inhibiting you from doing good research. And I acknowledge that that's a huge part, but that should not be in the personal statement, unfortunately. That can be in, you know, another prompt if they've given you one about personal history, diversity, um, but Stay focused on the research experience in your SOP. You can have different versions for different schools to highlight different research interests. And then the last part I will say is ask your Fatima Fellowship mentor to edit your personal statement. Uh, that is, you know, they're, they're here for that. I'm here for that. Um, you definitely want to get two to three eyes on your personal statement. This is not supposed to be done alone. Uh, I myself had many mentors look at my personal statement, edit grammar edit ideas, um, because we have an idea of what we want to describe, but it doesn't often come across that way. And I've seen that happen multiple times. I talk to a fellow and I'm like, hey, describe this research experience. They'll describe it beautifully, well done, Chris, but it's not in their personal statement. So having an eye on, on it is very important. And start now if you haven't started already. So please start now, because having a week of review um, uh, uh, oh yeah, a week of review for, for people to see is important. I'm going to go a little faster because I think I'm taking a lot of time, but uh, I think the le other parts are shorter. Resume, I won't go through this too much. I think people know uh, how to structure a resume, but I've listed it here on what the sections should be. 
So make sure you have these sections uh, and these points of location, dates, active verbs describing your, uh, your experiences, and make a website, which I've listed a template. You can ask your mentors for other templates, but um, make sure formatting in your resume is consistent. You can go to the next slide. Choosing schools and faculty. So this is, I think, a struggle for a lot of fellows um, and you know myself too. How do you like choose what schools to apply to? There's so many. Um, how do I, you know, if you, you will get in, you don't know. Uh, so having, I think, a framework like this, so this is what I used. You can do, you know, another type of structure, but basically listing schools that you're interested in, professors at those schools, deadline, essays, just information about each school is helpful because it gives you a bird's eye view as to, okay, what schools am I even, am I considering and what school should I actually end up applying to? So what I've listed here and you see in bold is professors that I actually will end up working with at each school. And then you'll see, oh, I realized that in school six, there's only one professor and maybe I'm not that excited about that professor. So I won't apply to that school. Um, so this really just helps you stay organized, share this with your mentor, with me, um, and you know, just have a general timeline of the things you need to get done because you don't wanna be missing any deadlines. Um, next slide. Um, I'm not gonna go into this too much. I've just given some uh, quick notes about how to choose schools. Uh, and I, I think the biggest thing here is ask your mentor for advice if you're confused and don't just base it off rankings. Uh, I would also base this off, you know, say you go to NeurIP, CVPR, ICML, and you see some very interesting papers that are related to your research. Look at who is, you know, writing that paper, what school they're from. That'll really just help you give, get an idea as to what are the relevant, uh, you know, schools for you um, who are doing exciting research. Um, and also new professors are always great to mention in your SOP um, because they're actively looking for students. Next slide. And this is the last one, hopefully. All right, resources. I'm gonna summarize this real quick. Um, message me with any general questions. I'm here to help. Please use me. Um, not as many of you are scheduling online advising as I would like. Um, so we can do this to revise your SOP, your resume, revise your list of schools. Um, it's a 45 minute meeting, but usually it goes for an hour to an hour and a half if you are able to meet that long. Um, if you are uh, lost on any part, you really don't even know how to start the personal statement, we can brainstorm. So any, you don't have to have everything done when you come. You can have a draft and we can use that as a baseline to discuss, but we can also just brainstorm. Um, so please schedule meetings with me or even just let me know you're applying. Uh, so then I have maybe your list of schools, your SOP, I can edit offline. Uh, just keep me in the loop if you can. Uh, join the admissions channel on Slack. If you haven't joined already, we post resources there. Um, we also have a list of sample SOPs and resumes from our incredible Fatima Fellowship mentors. Um, there is a thread that was posted by one of the mentors on some PhD statements. They have some great NLP focused SOPs, some from my colleagues that are pretty great. Um, and then some other threads that have samples. Um, and look for advising opportunities by grad schools that provide feedback from grad students. I think the UC Berkeley deadline has passed, but MIT and EPFL are still ongoing. So I would look at, for your specific schools, they're probably advising opportunities for international students, minority groups. So look at that. And then the last slide is there are lots of blogs. So, you know, don't read too many because everyone has an opinion on this. <laughs> I would, you know, uh, you know, if, if you're very lost and confused, for sure, look um, and see what people discuss. Um, but uh, I didn't talk to your mentor, talk to me. But if you just want to get a brief overview of what are professors looking for, you can look at some blogs. Uh, we're also going to have the other summit that will, you know, be from a professor at Stanford who will give you some advice. Um, but yeah, just uh, if you have, if you need any other resources, anything specific to your school, let me know and I can, I can look too. Um, but yeah. Just that's pretty much it. Uh, last note, please schedule advising with me if you need it. Uh, don't be shy. You can schedule as many as you like. Um, I myself met with a mentor uh, once like in two weeks when I was applying to grad school. This is not supposed to be done alone. So uh, please reach out if you need help.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Maroa. <laughs> that was incredibly, incredibly helpful. I mean, honestly, fantastically specific advice. And if any of the fellows have further questions, Marwa has generously offered her time. So please do reach out to her. <laughs>